Okay, I just want to note that uh, in some cases, depending on the type of refrigerator you use, you're going to have uh, little indentions like this lip right here that's going to, uh, that you're going to have to cut out just because your tray might not turn, might not pass it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to have to cut this lip right here out because it's not on this side. So this end went down further. I didn't notice that. So what I'll probably do is just, uh, I don't know. I may either, sorry. I may either just cut an indention right here, or I may cut this all the way out. Cause that's gonna restrict my airflow too. Like I gotta cut this out. I'm gonna have to cut this out cause my shelf not gonna turn. And then up here on this side, I got another Another groove, you can't really see it because it's dark. Um, another groove that I'm gonna have to cut out too. So, um, I'll probably just cut them out real quick and then show you what that looks like. It's gonna look like crap. I hate cutting them because it just don't look good after you do it, but I have no choice. All right, as you can see, I fixed the problem. Now, my two uh, side mounts are even. Um, as you can see, I had to cut these edges down on the side so that it would um, it would fit properly because this side was higher than this side. This is all I had to cut off this side. But you want to cut these sides off because um, if you don't, it's going to, um, after you put your shelves in, because it's going to have that much space on each side for the air, the hot air, to flow up. So you definitely want to cut these off so that it's smooth and your air can flow up the side to get all the shelves up on top even air flow um, same thing back here there was an indention so I cut that off right here this corner bowled out my shelf would never turn right here it never passed by same thing here so I cut it down um, I just used the grinder I'm gonna show you how uh, and then the same thing at the top so I just take a regular Harbor Freight grinder everything from Harbor Freight practically um, and I just like if I was gonna cut this or not, which I'm not because it's below. I just take the grinder and I run it down there, and I cut I cut around it, cut on the outside of it, and I just cut it all around. And then I got me a little knife and just um, proud it, plot, you know, um, pried it off. Uh, after I pried it off, I um, got the grinder again and just kind of went down like this real quickly a few times to just um, flatten the edges and make it more smooth and symmetric looking so it don't look as bad um, so that's pretty much what you want and uh, I'll get back with you on the next step alright so I put the door back on because I want to uh, install my fan. I want to put in everything that I have to wire at the same time. And then I just screwed this fan to the, uh, the top of the window. Right above the window. You don't want to put it at the top. I put it at the top the first time. You want to put it about, uh, I guess, a foot, a foot or so from the top. Um, give or take. Then, well, let me show you this. I want to show that window how to put it in just in case. I mean, you shouldn't know, but you might not. So all I did was cut a square out of the front of the door a little smaller, about an inch around, about an inch uh, smaller all the way around. What I did, I can show you on this one, is I laid the glass on top of the door before I cut it. And I just made these little L-shaped marks on each corner of the glass. Then I took a stick and I went in about an inch and I made a line going all the way across the top, all across the top, the bottom, the sides. And then you end up with a square. You cut that square out and then on the inside, you cut a bigger square so that you can sit your glass down 
and you have enough room to put the silicone around the sides as well. Um, but when you do that, you want to make sure you leave a piece like this so that you can stick it back in how I had it. I'm going to need two hands to stick it back in, but you've seen how it was just stuck in there. Let me see if I can do that with one hand. But if you cut it out right, it should fit perfectly. Just like that, yep. So that way it keeps my um, installation in as much as possible. All right, back to the fan. So I just screwed this fan. This is a fan that I took um, out of the inside of the freezer. And I just screwed it in with some regular screws. Just screwed it in. You see a hole right here? This is something new I'm trying. Um, instead of wiring it like I did with my wires, went from here and it kind of would be uh, hanged and then it drilled up into here. What I did is I drilled a hole here and then I drilled another hole. Let me grab my ladder. I drilled another hole at the top of the door. And then after I drilled that hole at the top of the door, I took this little rod here. I just took this rod and I stuck it down the hole, which I can't believe I got on the first try. And I just stuck it all the way down until I could see it. Right here in this hole. You see it right there, that little butt? Right, right there. Yep. And I'm going to run my power line in that hole. So that way, it won't, I won't have the... Uh, wires running from here to here because what happened is I needed so much slack to open the door with the wire when I closed the door it was grabbing one of the trays um, so I had to kind of tape that out of the way so this should work a lot better um, after I run the wire through the um, through that hole I'll show you alright so there we go I, uh, you see I ran the line through that hole Put me a couple female connectors on there and attached it. And my wires coming out the top. And I just cut a short piece to hook to my power once I get ready to hook the uh, switches and stuff up. Okay.